sorry. All righty. Uh, here we go again. Episode uh, four, I think we're up to. And luckily for us today, we have uh, a bit of double trouble with the, uh, with the girls from Kentucky here in Queensland. Uh, we're lucky enough to have Alana and Jem on the line and they're going to give us an update on all things Kentucky. So girls, uh, I might just get you to kick it off with uh, who you are, where you've come from and, and how you ended up sitting here today in your, in your Kentucky t-shirts, um, giving us an update from your little ISO world. Awesome. Um, I'll start. First of all, thanks Zoe Gentle for the nomination to come on and have a chat today. Um, my name's Alana. For those of you that haven't met me before, I am based in Brisbane, looking after all the north side of Queensland. I have been in the travel industry for just over eight years. I started with Virgin at the airport um, and then I was a trip leader for Kentucky over in Europe from 2014 for a couple of years um, and came moved back to Australia. I was down in Melbourne as the sales manager um, for a couple of years and then transferred up to beautiful sunny Queensland where I'm from, which brings me to now. Oh, cool. And Jen? Hey guys, I'm Jem from Kentucky. I am the sales manager um, based down here on the Gold Coast. I've been in the travel industry for just over three years now. So I started out my time as a travel agent in Flight Centre, um, but I'm very, very excited. I've just recently jumped to Kentucky um, very late last year. So um, exciting times for me. And um, for you first, Alana, how's, uh, how's the social distancing going? You know, like most reps out there, you guys are all very, uh, very social beings um, yeah. out, out and about at all the travel functions. And I'm sure even just in your personal lives. But uh, how's how's the, the social distancing going for you? Uh, it's definitely been tough. I actually started my quarantine time. I was over in Japan on my own personal holiday when all of this went down and had to, on the government's advice, come back ASAP. So obviously when we got back, um, my partner and I started 14 days of full lockdown quarantine, not leaving the apartment whatsoever. So now I'm at a point where I'm just extremely grateful to be able to even go outside to be able to go to the groceries and get my own groceries. So yeah. I think my whole mantra through all of this has just been be grateful for what you do have and those little opportunities to go outside and do your own thing is um, what's giving me life at the moment that's for sure so yeah how, how was that first trip to Woolies oh my god it was so exciting just to yeah. be able to choose my own groceries because before that we were relying on friends and family and they just yeah. kind of buy whatever's on the shelf and yeah, <laughs> yeah I, but it was I, very exciting I was in the same boat as well coming back from the, the travel partners conference uh, we were seven, yeah. hours, seven hours too late we got stuck inside for 14 days and and that first trip to Woolies it was like I don't know. It was, it was, it was like going to Disneyland. <laughs> it was like going to Disneyland. It definitely was. So I, yeah. I feel you there. What about you, Jem? How are you coping um, down on the sunny Gold Coast in isolation? Oh, there was certainly a period where I had to adapt. Um, <laughs> I am an absolute social butterfly. So going from being out on the road, even Alana, like I haven't seen Alana since before you went to Japan and I remember we were sitting in the car um, and we were having that conversation and Lance was like oh you know I bet you by the time I'm back it'll all be blown over um, so going from being out and about seeing my partner in crime all the time and um, going to the four walls of my house has been a huge um, change for me. Um, I've come to realize though if I don't take control of my day like it takes control of me and I just end up with cabin fever and I'm going crazy by the end of the day so it's probably been over a month now that we've been off the road and now I'm at the point where I've got a pretty strict routine. I get up early, I go to the beach um, and then I come home and start my day. Um, yeah. If, if you don't, it's just too much gemma time. That's what I've been saying. Like if you don't get up and get moving, it's just this, this much gemma time is hard, but um, yeah, I'm adjusting. And speaking of that, I guess, you know, what's, what's happening with you guys and your, your roles and I guess the, the Aussie team for Kentucky. How's this affected you guys? Obviously, you're still, still working in some way, shape or form, but what's, what's that actually look like? We are still working and, oh my gosh, like so, so, so grateful to still 
actually having like being able to work because that's another absolute um, treasure that we do have at the moment to keep us busy the fact that we can still work so like Alan says so grateful for what we do have um, on, on a business front the majority of our team are currently working off scaled back hours um, but when we are working we're still really really busy keeping touch with our agents and you know we've been personally contacting all of our agents that have impacted bookings um, due to the current suspended trips and all of that sort of stuff so yeah and what's um, what's Kentucky doing at the moment? Um, stay connected with with the agency guys. Just calling everyone, or what's what's happening? Yeah, so um, definitely our utmost priority is personally calling every single agent or agency that does have an impacted booking. It's so important to us to be able to personally contact these, our, like contact our people and help them feel really, really confident in communicating with their travellers on what the next steps are and let them know what Kentucky is doing to support them. Um, so on a day-to-day -day basis, that's a lot of phone calls. Like we have had, unfortunately, a huge amount of trips that have been impacted. So that takes up a lot of time. But also wherever possible, we're taking the opportunity to actually connect with some of our local suppliers around the globe, you know, in destination. But you can't forget the fact that Kentucky has grassroots locals in their hometowns through Europe and all of our other continents that their livelihood actually depends on delivering our Kentucky travellers authentic and real experiences in destinations. So we definitely haven't forgotten about our Kentucky family in Australia, but also across the globe as well. So a prime example of this is the fact that we had a lovely lady called Joanna. She's from Porto. So she was due to teach our Kentucky travellers how to make pastel donata the traditional way in her home in Portugal this travel season, which of course can't happen anymore. So, you know, it's very, very important to us to stay connected with our travellers and our agents, but of course our Kentucky family across the globe as well. So, yeah. And what's, uh, what's the current... Uh, where are you guys up to? I know these policies change pretty, pretty regularly, but just for any of the agents that are out there watching um, that may not have, have missed an email or, or haven't checked yet, what, what are you guys up to? What's the, what's the dates that you are, are all working towards? What should they be remembering? So our policy at the moment is we have suspended trips up to the 30th of June um, this year with um, departure dates after that to be decided, I guess, as it gets closer and we're keeping an eye on the situation. Um, what we're doing for customers at the moment, we really want to support our agency partners through this and um, the best way to do so is to really encourage customers as much as possible to change their dates rather than obviously cancelling. Um, and so uh, what we're trying to do is really jump on board with that message that's being spread through social media, which I think is absolutely inspiring, by the way, to see so many people encouraging passengers, change your dates, don't cancel, um, because that is what's going to keep the tourism industry alive in this time. Um, obviously, we understand that not everyone is in a position to change their dates and some customers um, don't know what the next 12 months look like. So if that's the case, then they have the opportunity to just hold those funds as a credit um, until December 2022. So quite a long time to decide what they <laughs> want to do. Um, but the best place to stay up to date with our policy, if you're worried that you have missed an email or anything, um, kentiki.com.au and then just click on the um, travel alerts page, which I'll ask Josh to link for us in the Facebook post with this one. Cool. And what about the future for Kentucky? What, what's, um, you know, what's the big picture stuff? I know it's really hard because, you know, no one really knows what the future is going to hold, um, how long this yeah. is going to last for. But, you know, like most companies, you know, people are, I guess, talking about what, what could this look like in six months, if it lasts for nine, if it lasts for 12, if it lasts for 18, you know, yeah. any, any big um, and smart um, company is going to be looking at those future plans. Has there been some, some conversations or some stuff sort of drip fed down to you guys to, to, to hear what the bigger picture plans are for Kentucky? Yeah, so um, as I said, like with regards to this year departures, we're just kind of playing it by ear and monitoring the situation to see um, what's going to happen with those trips that are due to depart from July onwards. Um, but at the moment, we've seen a lot of our passengers um, that are booked through agencies, they are 
changing their dates, which is awesome. They're jumping on, um, obviously a lot of people feel more comfortable changing to like 2021 departures. So at this stage, our passenger numbers for 2021 are really, really amazing. It's looking like it's going to be a huge year for us next year, which we're excited about. Um, and then the next step on from that is just make, making sure that we are operationally ready for those passengers next year and making sure that we've got the capacity to support bigger numbers than what we usually have. Um, something really exciting that I can tease a little bit at the moment, um, a lot of you might know the Contiki Chateau in France, our 16th century French chateau. Um, that one has actually just undergone a massive 2 million euro renovation. Um, it was supposed to host its first groups of Contiki customers this month. Obviously that hasn't happened sadly, but we're very excited to shortly um, be able to share some pictures to show you what it looks like now. Um, hopefully some videos and stuff as well, of the inside of the Chateau. So yeah, it'd be really exciting for the groups that do get to um, be the first ones going through there. You don't, you don't have any pictures or videos of that yet? We can't share that. Not quite ready. Um, it should be ready very soon though. Yeah. That's cool. Maybe come back and yeah. we'll uh, link them into the page or something when they're up and running. Yeah. It's so yeah. exciting. <laughs> I feel like now that it's been delayed even more, it's yeah. more exciting. Did, um, did Kintiki have any like destinations or new destinations on their radar or anything like that, that they've had to put on pause or anything that's happening um, on that side of things? Um, yes, yeah, so we had the um, Portugal trip that was running for the first time this year. That was just a Portugal-specific itinerary. Um, that was supposed to obviously have its first departure this month as well, which has just been on pause for a little bit now. Um, so, yeah, a bit of a shame, but I'm sure once things go back to normal, um, we'll be able to start running those departures as planned. What I can tease a little bit as well is we are currently in the process of looking at handling. So let's be real, there's probably going to be a big influx of domestic travel coming soon. Um, so from a product aspect as well, um, we are just gathering ideas and thoughts around how we can best cater for the humongous influx of Australian tourism that the industry is going to see. Um, I won't give too much away there as well, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. So you mean like uh, Kintiki Australia for Australians as opposed to the international guys coming yeah, in? Yeah, look, I mean, about? looking at the product we currently have, um, I think it it's pretty directed at international travellers who may be in Australia looking to see, you know, the main sites of Australia that anyone travelling here would like to see. But I guess we're in a phase of looking at, okay, how, how can we broaden our audience and our appeal of Australian Kintiki trips? So yeah, we've um, we've actually been asked for our input for potential trip ideas and stuff like that as well, just to cater for the huge boom that is going to be coming our way, you know, when the restrictions in Australia are hopefully lifted. Yeah. It's a chance to be creative for us as well, which at this point in time um, has been, yeah, really exciting. Well, that's great. And I guess just on that, you know, and it kind of falls in line with similar to what I guess we're kind of advising our agents or, you know, telling people they should possibly be doing is thinking outside the square themselves um, in their own businesses, um, in their own small businesses. Um, so do you guys have any sort of advice or any tips or anything you think that um, our agents out there should be doing at the moment in this sort of downturn? I mean, I'd start off with just staying positive. Like, and I know that sounds so cliche and I know that's probably the most basic sort of advice that I could give. But to be honest, I think it just needs to be repeated again and again because it is the simplest way to keep ourselves going through this horrible time, you know. Um, I think it's all about perspective and it's, like Alana said at the start of the call, it's not about what we don't have at the moment. It's about what we do have at our fingertips as well. So you can get outside and just keep active. You know, as I said before, keeping a strict routine for myself has just absolutely kept me insane. Uh, kept me insane. It's kept me sane, I should say. Um, <laughs> it's kept me insane. Um, but as well, you know, um, bringing it back to continuing what we're doing as well, um, we've really pivoted our normal product and campaign. So all over our social media and stuff as well. We're really focusing on communication towards mental well-being and just trying to assist the broader community in keeping positive. So that's certainly a great asset that people can um, access as well. 
Yeah, I agree with that, Gemma. Like definitely an attitude thing at the moment, focusing on what you do have. And one big thing that we do have at the moment is time and opportunity to learn. And I think absolutely maximizing this time to be upskilling yourself as much as possible. Um, I'm going to do a cheeky plug for our Contiki U modules here because I think all agents will definitely benefit from doing those. Um, they are short, sharp to the point. Um, so you, you can sort of go through each of the modules in about 15 minutes each and really just get to know a lot more about Contiki products. Um, so definitely make the most of this time that you wouldn't normally have because when things bounce back, it's going to bounce back in a big way and you're not going to have the time then. It'll be too late. So make the most of having the time now. Um, like I said, the Contiki U modules, um, which you can access through that agent portal. Um, and we'll ask Josh to please link that in this post as well. Um, also, if you haven't had a look, um, I know I speak to a lot of agents who are not very confident with social media and how to use it as a business tool. So please jump on the Kentucky Instagram, have a look at the trip hashtags that you can see um, on the side of each brochure page. Um, and also watch some of the YouTube videos. If you haven't done Kentucky personally, it's a it's the next best thing to watch the Kentucky YouTube channel and start to immerse yourself in those videos and see what are the experiences that travelers are really going to have. What's the emotion that they're really going to feel when they go on those trips? Because when we bounce back, you'll be so much more confident in talking about the product um, if you've done those things. So yeah, using the time to be productive. I think on the back end of that as well, anyone, you know, we work in the tourism industry because it's exciting, right? It keeps us on, us, on our toes. And even before we came into this phase of lockdowns, et cetera, et cetera, I think even before that, anyone can agree that the tourism industry is a turbulent one. And anyone who's been around for the last couple of years can agree that, you know, the industry has its ups and it certainly has its downs as well. And I just feel, I put myself in my shoes of, you know, a month ago or the beginning of the year. And I just, even Josh, when I, I remember I started the role and um, it was the end of last year and you said, oh, enjoy your Christmas break, Gem. Things are about to get hectic for you. I remember so I felt a little bit nervous. I was like, oh yeah, they are going to get really, really busy. Coming from the start of the year where I would have, or we all would have begged for this much downtime and now to be almost blessed with this much downtime to be able to invest in ourselves or renovate our furniture or spend more time at the beach. While keeping a distance um yeah as soon as i feel that i'm st sort of having one of those bad days where my day is taking control of me and i'm getting cabin fever i just bring myself back to that place where life was so busy and we always had somewhere to be and somewhere to go so and now i like i can't help but feel grateful for the fact that i can jump online and do an online course and invest in myself for free if i wanted to so yeah it's about perspective and appreciating the you know the downtime that we do have and if we were if we were um if we were lucky enough for any of those travel agents to still be on the call or still watching this, um, but possibly don't think that Kintiki is their market or, you know, haven't been selling a lot of Kintiki. Maybe they play in the older markets um, with their customers, not necessarily themselves, or it could be themselves. Um, I know, unfortunately myself, I'm now only just out of being able to go on a Kintiki tour um, myself, but you know, we, we, we know that there's going to be a new, a new industry or a, a new world um, for agents out there at the other side of this. It could be that um, people that have never used a travel agent before um, are going to come to a travel agent based on the good work that everyone's been doing out there. Um, yeah. So maybe if you thought the younger um, clientele, you know, wasn't yours before, maybe they will become yours, um, you know, on the other side yeah. of this or, parents are going to be really encouraging their, you know, their 20 somethings, you know, you have to use a travel agent. If another pandemic comes and, you know, and you're stuck somewhere, I need to know that you've used a travel agent. So, you know, yeah. this could be an opportunity for people to, that possibly haven't sold Kentucky too much before, or, or it's been a long time since they've played in that space. You know, yeah. how are they going to, how do they, how do they make sure that they are ready for a possible influx of, of uh, 22 and 23 year olds, either walking into their business or contacting them, you know, through social media, whether that's, as I said, through, generational, you know, mums and dads or, or even grandparents, you know, encouraging people to, to use an agent. You know, what would you say to those guys that, you know, it might have been a while um, since they've actually played in the Kentucky space? 
I would say absolutely use this time to do your research, to understand the market. Um, like I said, looking through our social media is a great place to start. Instagram, YouTube, jump on that and have a look. What is the marketing message that Kentiki is putting out there and how can you align your business's marketing message with that as well? Mm. I would also definitely use the time to research um, what events happen in your local area that young people go to, what local area marketing opportunities exist for you when this all washes over. Um, being on top of that, having that research under your belt and a business plan for when the market bounces back is going to be your best bet. Use your existing customer base. Yeah, a lot of them are probably parents or grandparents. How can you talk to their kids? How can you talk to them and encourage them to get their kids booking through you as well? Give great success stories of where in the last few weeks you've been able to help customers who were stranded get home. I know I've heard a lot of agents that I've spoken to have been able to help people in those situations. Use those success stories to really elevate yourself, show your value, tell that to the parents or grandparents of Kentucky age travelers and show, you know, just if this ever happens again, touch wood, it doesn't, it's been horrible. But if it does, I know how to handle this and I'll be the one who can get your child home safely. It's, it's such a great time for travel agents. You know, some of, like, like you said, some of the amazing stories that we've seen, it's been so heartwarming to see like, you know, even the agents that we're connected with, Alana, we've seen some insane efforts from agents helping people who didn't even book with them originally get them home because of pure sheer love of what they do. And, you know, it's I'm so proud of all of the agents in the industry for what they've done. Um, to help be prepared as well, you know, for the influx that we are potentially facing, Alana, again, you hit the nail on the head, using social media as a business tool to drive your message, your key points as to what value you can show. But also, we're still here. I would, I would love to do some training, like reach out to us as well. We are still here and, you know, our utmost priority is supporting all of our agents and anyone in the industry as much as we possibly can. So if you want that one-on-one -on -one training, you know, reach out to us. We would be more than happy to do whatever training we can over Zoom, over Skype or however we can, you know, we're still here and we're so, so, so excited to have the opportunity to support everyone and to continue to train those who want it during this time. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and, you know, the, the Kentucky customers are, are going to be the future Trafalgar customers or Insight customers, um, you know, Uni World and, and the likes. You know, Mercedes and, and BMW and, and all those car brands, they, they sell hatchbacks for a reason. You know, they, they didn't sell hatchbacks um, to their existing um, older market. Um, for any reason, they, they wanted their, their older clientele or their, the mums and dads or the grandparents to be encouraging the kids to, you know, to get out there and get the, the I guess that, um, you know, that's the early days into, into the, the car market to grab that, you know, become a Mercedes driver by getting that hatchback. And then, you know, later on, they're going to progress them into their higher products. So, again, if you're an agent out there that doesn't think Kintiki is your market or you don't have that market, then you know you're missing out on a, a big chunk of the pie. Um, so you know, as I said, what better time in the downturn to upskill yourself, get all over the product, see what it looks like now. Kentucky of 2020 or 2021 is not the same as 1985 when uh, you know in their head might be picturing what a what a Kentucky tour looks like. So yeah, um, so I think you're right there. So appreciate that. Um, I guess the only last thing to do is to get you nominate three. Um, I won't ask for six because it's just, <laughs> I don't know, with homeschooling, I just don't have the time in my hands to, to do too many, uh, you know, of these Zoom calls. But uh, yeah, what's uh, who are the three guys or, or girls that you, you want us to um, get on and, and get some information from them too? I think first up, uh, we wanted to nominate another dynamic duo, um, Lauren and Kai from Trafalgar here in Queensland as well. They're our work sisters. Um, and I think they would have a lot of really valuable input um, to agents at the moment. So I think they would be awesome to come on um, to interview and give um, their perspective on everything and um, answer a lot of these kind of questions. Um, Jem, have you got I'd, someone in mind? I'd love to hear from Covermore Insurance. Let's find out what Tom Troy is up to. I'd love to hear what's going on in his world and what it looks like being on the other side of insurance during this time. Love oh. to hear about it. Um, and finally, I think for our third nomination, um, I might suggest um, Ben Gorman from Rocky Mountaineer. 
Um, he's also an industry old hand and I think he'd have a lot of um, valuable advice for travel agents at the moment. Cool. Oh, well, we'll tag them in the posts and uh, yeah, get them, get them on as soon as we can as well. So girls, thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, it was great to chat. It's great to hear um, how things are going in the Kentucky world and your worlds personally as well. Um, so keep up good work and uh, thank you so much. And hopefully we'll see you on the other side. Thanks so much, Josh, for having us on. It's been really great to catch up and take care of yourself as well. Pleasure. No worries. All right. See you later.